I'm um, Pablo Lopez Ortiz. I'm from Spain. I'm studying at the University of Navarre. I have uh, an industrial engineering uh, degree with a data analytics uh, itinerary. My name is Guido, I come from Italy, but I study in Paris, uh, Sciences Po, where I just finished my first year of international security. So my name is uh, Lorenzo Cavallon. I am Italian, but I study in Paris, uh, uh, international security at Sciences Po Paris. I am Kirello Smisei, I'm Italian and Egyptian, and um, I'm completing my Master in International Conflict Studies at King's College London. Uh, so I really much believe that each of us has the potential to make the world, and in this case NATO, a better place, and so I really wanted to give my contribution firsthand uh, by taking this amazing opportunity of talking to very high-ranking uh, political military staff of NATO. Um, my main motivation for applying to the Student Challenge definitely was um, the topic, uh, Emerging and Disruptive Technologies. This is a topic that uh, is very important um, and that uh, I am personally very interested in. Um, however, also the fact that uh, uh, there was a visual component to the challenge, um, the video aspect, that really attracted me because it combines my creative uh, side as well as my academic one. Uh, I have a great, great interest in the technical part of the of how the armies work in this world. So I think that with uh, with this student challenge, I will uh, have the opportunity to present my work as an engineering uh, and how an uh, engineer student can give uh, part of uh, their status and knowledge to the army and to the NATO in general. So I uh, I decided to apply to the student challenge simply because I wanted to do something creative and um, maybe possibly useful. Yeah, so in my proposal I highlight the information security issues that um, the increasing proliferation of neurotechnologies may have. Um, I approach this from a triple helix uh, of innovation model, which um, focuses on the cooperation between government, industry and academia. I feel there are a lot of mi misconceptions about emerging and disruptive technologies and in our policy proposals we wanted to just warn about some misunderstanding to intercept some emerging gaps and, and trends. So uh, in our posi policy proposals um, we point out that uh, um, the operational speed of emerging and disruptive technologies may compress uh, decision-making timelines requiring the proliferation of AI in uh, command and control structures. However, uh, we believe that uh, such a proliferation of AI in decision-making might end up increasing uncertainty, creating a new digital fog of war made of uh, spoofing, um, uh, malicious generative bots uh, and data poisoning. So basically, emerging and disruptive technologies are shaping the world in an unprecedented way, and specifically, our proposal concerns the acceleration of operational tempo on the battlefield. Reason why what we proposed to the generals was the establishment of a center of excellence for hyperwarfare in charge of mitigating the risks always associated with the integration of artificial intelligence in military decision making. My proposal talks about creating a digital twin at a structural level for NATO. So there are already in the world a lot of digital twins or of frigates. There is an example of the Naventius frigates in Spain. So I want to take a, a step further on this and get this digital twin that, are, that it's usually of, of cars or technical parts to a structural level, getting all the information from all over the NATO and the armies in the world and get it in one place to process it and have like a big overview of what NATO is making and what NATO has uh, in immediately in one moment. Well, it, it was a, such a great honor to present in front of NATO political and military leadership. Um, I feel that the feedbacks we received, especially from Admiral Bauer, the chair of the military committee, and our Supreme Aligned Command Transformation uh, General Lavigne, uh, showed us that they were really interested in our proposals, they wanted to know more. So this uh, fueled my policy aspirations, I want to 
go on, research further and uh, possibly contribute to the future of our alliance. This experience has given to me the view of the concept of NATO, like a big alliance where we are together fighting for the same uh, objective. And I think this this vision that I had um, that I had on this on this trip and this uh, nice opportunity that NATO gave me, I think it's given to me like uh, the um, the emotion to be more excited about contributing to the the. Um, the army and to the NATO. Be it that I was in a, in a room with um, four-star generals or with uh, fellow students at the NATO Youth Summit, I felt that um, we all um, shared the same desire for change, for a better future. Um, and that truly empowered me uh, to continue uh, research on the topics that uh, I think um, are important for tomorrow. Honestly, taking part to the NATO Youth Summit in Washington, D.C., and then presenting in front of the SACT and the Chair of Military Committee here in Norfolk was the greatest honor of my life. And I think that that really boosted even more my motivation to one day work for NATO and to contribute to strengthening uh, this alliance. So there were a lot of highlights during our trip here to the United States, uh, such as taking part to the NATO Youth Summit in Washington, D.C., but for sure the most amazing part was having the opportunity to interact with a living part of the political military decision-making of NATO and having the opportunity to talk to them vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, presenting to them our ideas, and I'm really grateful um, to them for the attention that they have paid to it. Oh, the most uh, remarkable experience in the past few days uh, has to be the presentation that we gave uh, to NATO's senior leadership, um, including uh, uh, the chair of the military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer and um, uh, Sakti General Lavigne. The opportunity to talk with them and they were so uh, friendly people and to know that there is uh, such great people um, uh, managing well directing our our army that uh, um, and to be and then they're responsible of our peace well the most remarkable activity well for sure um, it was a privilege to plant a tree with our supreme aligned command transformation general Lavigne uh, there were three trees one for the a one for the C and one for the T and our our tree was the C one the concept to capability one and I just hope to come back here to the headquarters in maybe 10 years and see our tree grown up bigger and stronger, hopefully as our alliance. Young people have a um, truly different viewpoint um, shaped by the environment they've grown in, one that is uniquely uh, digitalized and globalized um, and I think that gives them um, the ability to view problems uh, from a different angle um, and that's that's why it's important to take their voices into consideration to be able to anticipate uh, the risks of tomorrow. So some proposals are really ambitious and of course experienced uh, leadership is well aware of all the constraints that prevent uh, these ambitious ideas from coming true, while young voices and young people have the genuine belief and the genuine energy to push for these ambitious idea, ideas to come true. Young people may not have the same uh, experience and competences, but I guess we have one thing that you don't have, that is uh, our battery is still at 100% and we, are, we can't wait to go outside there and use our energy, creativity, fresh vision to change the world. Win as a team. Um, I participated um, in team together with my colleague and friend uh, Guido and that was a great, great experience. Use a lot of ambition, um, dream big, be humble and come here by being conscious that the generals you will be talking to consider you as one of their colleagues 
and I have a lot of tr trust in you. Uh, dream loudly, dream high. NATO commanders are looking to hear from you. Be passionate about uh, the topic that uh, you want to present about and don't be afraid that it might sound um, uh, unrealistic uh, or outside of the box. It has to be outside of the box. It's a challenge about innovation.